Hello everybody, Juliana here. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we are making our very first recipe in this new kitchen. I will be showing you one of my favorite foods and one that everybody goes crazy for. Fresh homemade pizza. This recipe is very simple, authentic and so good. I will also show you how to cook your pizza on a pizza stone to give it that authentic pizza oven feel. Your dough will be light and delicious and I will show you how to top it with the perfect sauce and ingredients. Vamos! Let's make some pizza! So of course, let's start with our pizza dough. You can make your dough by hand or with a mixer. I recommend using a mixer to make your life easier. For this kind of recipe, I really like to use a scale. It's easier to make everything more precise. Into your mixing bowl, add 500 grams of bread flour. You can also use zero zero flour. Five grams of instant dry yeast. Give that a mix. And add 10 grams of salt. Then add 330 milliliters of water. The water should be like butter temperature, not hot, not cold. Mix everything together over medium speed for 7 to 10 minutes. After 7 minutes, you can start to check your dough. Stretch your dough thinly until you're able to see through the dough without breaking it, like a window. This shows you the gluten has developed enough and the dough is ready. Place the dough over an oiled surface. Press it out, taking all the air. And fold it like this, to make a ball shape. Place the dough into a bowl with some oil and let it prove for two hours. If you're shaping and making the pizza the same day. But if you have the time, prove it in the fridge for three days. It's called cold fermentation. It makes a better pizza. It will make your dough more elastic, giving a nice and chewy pizza texture. Next, it's all about the sauce, which is also a very important part of the perfect pizza. It's super simple. Blend 180 grams of Pomodoro Italian tomatoes. These ones I've got for my Italian store. 70 milliliters of olive oil. A half a teaspoon of kosher salt. 1 teaspoon of dried oregano and about 12 to 15 leaves of fresh basil. Blend everything until it's nice and smooth. This is one of my favorite tools. Check out my Essential Kitchen Tools video in the description below to learn more. I could have used a larger container, too late now. Just blend it slowly if this happens to you too. Stir one large minced garlic. Make sure to taste it and add seasoning as you need to. You can make a ton of sauce at once and have it for the next time. You can keep it in the fridge for 3 to 5 days. Or you can freeze it in plastic freezer bags for 6 months. When putting the sauce into freezer bags, just make sure to leave some space so the sauce can expand. So, for storing our dough, you will need some plastic containers like this. These are very close to what chefs in restaurants use for approving their dough. You also need a dough cutter and a scale with plastic wrap to weigh out your dough. After proving your dough, either one day or three, place the dough over an oiled surface, pressing down, taking all the air. Portion the dough into equal pieces, 180 grams for medium pizzas, and about 250 grams for large. I will be making large pizzas. For this recipe, those weights will make a nice thin dough and a thicker crust. Work the dough folding it from the outside to the inside like this, making a round movement. Work it until you get a smooth ball. Place the dough into the containers and cover. Do the same with all your dough.
prove the same dado for another hour and the three dado for one and a half hours to two hours. The dough will spread out and prove just a little, not double in size. Prepare your toppings while the dough is proving for the second time. Get the mozzarella ready, you will need a lot. So for our first pizza we will be making a very traditional one, with just pepperoni. On one half, to spice it up and play with some flavor, I will be adding some chili flakes and honey over the pepperoni. Trust me, it's a must try! For our second pizza, I will top with cremini mushrooms that I just mixed with minced garlic, fresh thyme, salt, black pepper, and a splash of olive oil. I also add some very thinly sliced red onions. For the last pizza, I will be adding some cherry tomatoes, fresh mozzarella, and basil. Over a floured surface, work each piece of dough. Open it like this. Use your fingers and after like this use your hands. You can use a different techniques here like this. And find the one you feel more comfortable with. Work it until about 10 inches for the larger size and 6 inches for the medium. I just got this piece of stone and I have to say I love it. It's easy to use and really gives you that pizza oven taste and texture. This will take your pizza to the next level. Before placing the pizza on the stone, you need to preheat into your already preheated oven for 15 minutes. Using a pizza stone, add some semolina on top so the dough doesn't stick. Place your dough over top and add the sauce. Use a ladle, it really helps. About half a ladle for large and one quarter ladle for medium. Add the cheese. In Brazil, we like a lot of cheese. So, I will leave the amount of cheese up to you. And then add the toppings. Bake the pizzas in a preheated oven at the highest temperature your oven can go. Mine is 500 degrees. Place the pizza in the middle rack and bake it until the cheese is melted and you start to see some color on the edges. Then place it on the top rack and broil the pizza just until it gets that nice brown color on the edges and on the toppings. Each oven can be different, so just be aware of your timing. For my oven, it took 9 in the middle and 1 minute on high broil. Be very careful when taking the pizza from the oven. The stone gets really hot, you need gloves at all times. Let it cool down just a bit so you don't burn your mouth. Cut the pizza and serve. I gotta say I'm in love with this stone. The dough came out so fresh and airy and it's really so simple to make. The sweetness of the honey gives a nice contrast to the saltiness of the pepperoni. The sauce is also bright and deep, lots of freshness from the tomatoes and herbs. Nicely balanced toppings and a great amount of cheese. You can add less cheese if you want, but I don't think anybody likes less cheese. For the last pizza, I want to show you that you can freeze the pizza after adding your toppings. Homemade pizzas usually last in the freezer for 4 to 6 months. You just need some cardboard or a rounded tray, plastic wrap and freezing bags. For this one, I add less of the first mozzarella to give that balance with the fresh mozzarella. And I will add the basil just after baking. 
so you can have a very fresh homemade pizza as well from Frozen. I really hope you liked this video as much as I liked making and eating. This is a great recipe because you can have enough dough, sauces and tops ready in the fridge or freezer when you need them. Don't forget to drop that like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here for much much more. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next video, ciao!